an upgrade. Welcome back to my channel, and if you've never been here before, <laughs> I just heard a wolf. I hope you have your seatbelts on, because we are about to really <laughs> experience sort of a metaphorical uh, car wreck together in which we will need the jaws of life to get us out of the car. Metaphorically. Woo! Today, we are going to be talking about the incomparable, and not necessarily in a good way, Gabby Hanna, of course, because she never will stop. Oh, we've got a lot of things to catch up on. I feel like we should just get into it. But before we do, I want to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Adam and Eve. If you don't know Adam and Eve, what are you doing on the internet? Come on, Janice. What is adamandeve.com, you ask? Well, let me inform you, friend. Adamandeve.com is a website, a giant website that sells lingerie and adult toys, pretty much anything your heart desires in that realm of things. They have a fantastic inventory, not to mention exquisite 24-hour customer service, 90-day no-hassle returns. 20% of the profits go to fighting the spread of HIV around the world. So it's not just good business, it's good business with a cause. And 2021 just happens to be Adam and Eve's 50th anniversary, which is insane. So if you need a little something something in your life, you go to adamandeve.com. Why? Well, viewer, because with my code, SAYJACK, you can score yourself an item for 50% off. With free shipping. It's almost insane not to do this. Go do it. Thank you, Adam and Eve, for sponsoring this video. And let's get into the absolute anarchy. So, when we last met, we had gotten through a few things. Uh, Gabby's issues with drama channels, Gabby's issues with Angela Goals in particular, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And now we've hit the sort of Achilles heel of it all um, with a few videos uh, that have just kind of surfaced that don't seem to be part of the series, like uh, her ripping off Cheryl Lloyd. Um, before I get into this, I want to preface this video by saying that there are a few trigger warnings. Uh, I'm not really rocking the intro today because I really have a lot to get through. So I'm going to give you the trigger warnings and we're just going to get into it. I'm going to chapter this video so that if anything in this video does hold a trigger for you, you can skip ahead and you can do whatever it is you got to do. Um, so we are going to be talking a lot about SA, maybe not in detail, but talk of SA, a lot about mental health, uh, you know what, all of them, all of them, just all of them, just this video is chaptered. We are going to start today with Gabby's video <clears throat> put out a few days ago entitled Chapter 6, Smiles for the Camera, because she really thought she did something with that title. I'm the one that's good at titles. The beginning of this video, Gabby talks about, uh, like these videos start with weird random vlogs, which I find really sort of takes you out of the entire thing. I get that it's supposed to feel like a cohesive docuseries type thing, but like I, f I feel like this, the vlog style, like first half of it really doesn't have anything to do do with the rest of it. Um, Gabby talks about getting uh, almost scammed by a door-to-door -door person who was trying to sell her magazines. Just also almost got scammed because somebody knocked on my door and they were selling magazines door to door. And the way he kind of like intro the whole thing was saying that he was raising money so he could go to school. You could either keep the magazines or donate the magazines. I was like, yeah, dude, of course you don't have to sell yourself to me. I see you. I got you. I know what it's like to like hustle and I know what it is to like have to sell shit. I was just telling him about how I almost got scammed. And he was like, okay, so here's the packages. And the lowest package was $849. Apparently she needed Peyton to tell her that that was a scam. 
gift of a donation, which I guess wasn't even a donation. I'm glad that you helped me realize what that was because well, that like- This is for a website that says like the, all the people that filed claims, it's most of the people are saying they never got anything. <sighs> Then there's like a relatable, minutes long, really relatable debacle uh, of like relatable finding her phone. Like she can't find it anywhere. It's like relatable. I don't know where my phone is. I just had it. How is it not here? I've never once needed my phone and had it. <laughs> No, it's in here too. It has to be. It didn't go anywhere. What the fuck? This is wrong. Purple mattress probably fucking took it. <laughs> what the fuck? Where's my phone? I could start without it, but I feel like I always need my phone for something whenever I start talking. <sighs> okay, let's just hope I don't need it. Then she cuts down the word anxious to anxious. Ooh. I just got really anxious. That's adorable. You're 30, just say anxious. Then we get to hear Gabby's like super hot take about Prince William, how people shouldn't make fun of him because he's bald and balding. And like, what does that say to men that are bald and balding, you know? What is it she said to Dom DeAngelis? And I said, well, you're too short for me to fuck. I mean, what does that say to short men? Are you coming for Martin Short? That's my job. You're probably stupid yourself. <laughs> then I shit you not, Gabby humble brags. She humble brags about how her bra smells bad and she thinks it's hysterical that she hasn't washed her bra long enough that it has a body odor smell. Dude, I haven't washed this bra in like I don't I don't know. I don't want to like admit to be honest. Cuz if I was being honest. <laughs> oh my god, my phone. I vomited into my mouth a little because that's gross. I mean, I'm all for like wearing the same bra for as long as you can ride it out. But man, when you, like, you know when that bra is ready to be washed, you know what I mean? And it's before it smells bad. That's a fact. As a, a human who wears bras daily, Yikes. I'm not gonna lie. I had to do both of these videos and make notes and it took me hours and then I had nightmares <laughs> Oh, yeah, the weird cutesy baby voice is back And I got to break which made my skin do that thing That happens to snails when you like pour salt on them That voice that I just did means me and you are getting really close. I Love it. And then we somehow segue into Alex James uh, and how he used to bully Gabby about her nose He once told me in front of our mutual friend at dinner Don't you think Gabby would look good with a nose job dead ass like dead ass dead ass that shit you see in movies is dead dead ass ass these bitches she then takes the opportunity to expose Alex for faking a car wreck in order to get a nose job and liposuction, as in a pre planned excuse to get cosmetic procedures done. Um, and to that I say, even if that is true, who fucking cares? That is not your business. If that is true, what difference does that make to the story? He told you to get a nose job and liposuction, okay? And then he went and got a nose job and liposuction, okay? And. <laughs> The realization that not everyone has to like you or pretend to like you or like the fact that some people just say things bluntly even if it's inappropriate like you can't control everybody and you can't control the way people look at you or think about you or feel about you. Why are we exposing that? How is that making you look better? He made a story on YouTube pretending to have gotten into a car accident so that he could pretend like he literally, dude, that shit was so fucking crazy. That was the first time that I was like, oh, you're a for real psycho. That's rich. <laughs> like Jeff Bezos in space rich. Only tells lady getting out of her 1892 Buick. First thought, no this bitch did not just hit me with a Buick. Literally, this is such a fucking reach. Like, make sure you stretch. 
because like we're doing a lot of fucking reaching in this video. Get your yoga pants on, pull out the mat, make it a whole moment because like we're going to be stretching a lot. He made sure to let you know that the police officer knew who he was. I'm trying to figure out how to tell the part where the cop showed up and he was like, are you that guy from Vine? He's looking off camera to get his thoughts together. Like he's thinking, like have you never looked off camera to like think? Is that so outrageous? Unless he's prote literally pretending that there's someone there, which if he is, she didn't provide that context because it just looks like he's looking off camera, thinking out loud. If that's the case, she's literally the worst at giving context and like receipts. I had a bandage here that he was wearing and bandages on his nose. To half the people, he was like, I got lipo and a nose job. And then to the other half of the people, he was saying he got into a car accident. Depending on who he talked to, the story changed. It was literally so insane. Who fucking cares? If Alex James threw his naked body at a 12-foot cactus because he wanted a full skin replacement, who cares? That is his business. Relishing and outing someone's story like this as some kind of like gotcha moment is so petulant and so stupid and completely irrelevant. And hey, what does that say to all the people who want to get cosmetic procedures but are too afraid to talk about it with their friends? Let's ask Prince William for his thoughts. I gotta talk about Jesse Smiles too. Of course you do, Angel. Of course you do. Because what pisses me off is her biggest advocate was Alex James, who literally actually did all the shit they were accusing me of. I feel like I'm about to continue to say this a lot. Um, who cares? Who, f who cares? It's not your business what Alex did or did not do. It's not your problem what Alex did or did not do. You are not Alex. You are not Jesse. Therefore, it is not up to you to decide how everyone should feel toward either of them. We'll get there. I'm so sure of it. Now we're going to get to this whole section of the video um, where it's just text written on screen. And this is a portion of the video that's been updated since Jessie made her most recent video. Not super helpful to her vision impaired friends, but again, Gabby doesn't give a fuck. It's been a few months since I recorded these and I'm able to look back at them with a new, clearer headspace now that I feel like I've processed through a lot of this stuff. And also so much has happened since that put a lot of stuff into even more perspective for me. I'm so fucking tired of watching her say that she's fucking bored. It's really making me angry. For a lot of people, this all started in November of 2019 when Jesse put out Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped. But what's always been really difficult and hard for me to understand is just a few months earlier, Jesse put out another video where she brought me up. This is something that Jesse has done a lot over the years, whether it was through you know live streams, tweets, comments, videos where she either directly or indirectly talks about me. Who fucking cares? If someone's talking about you indirectly, who cares? This isn't high school, who gives a shit? If she doesn't directly talk about me, she makes sure to leave a very specific clue that it is about me. Probably gonna get a lot of shit for this, but whatever. I just strongly dislike when YouTubers say, welcome back to my channel. As you guys know, like I just went through a very hard move. And I posted my vlog about my move on May 30th and just five days later on June 4th, she uploaded this video, which brought me a lot of negative attention and hate. And of course, people assuming that it was me, especially with the welcome back intro comment. Even if you're receiving hate because of it, which I doubt, I sincerely doubt. Why would you receive hate for any of that? Block them and go. But not long before Gabby Hanna needs to be stopped, she put out a video saying that we were on good terms and that we talked through everything and we were fine. Said it before, we are not on bad terms. And I'm so happy that all that shit is like in the past because it was so stressful. But because Jessie literally cannot help herself, she also in that video had to talk about how we hurt each other in all these crazy ways. I don't think, and I think I've said this before in videos where uh, Trisha Paytas was involved, because I don't think Gabby, and I don't mean that, I really don't mean this as a slight because I know that this can be an effect of certain mental health um, disorders or mental, you know, mental illness. Um, I don't think Gabby understands any type of social cues, cordial behavior. There's, there's either we're super close and like best friends or we're fucking nothing and you treated me like dirt and you're my abuser. There's no middle ground, which leaves no room for, again, these social cues where you are um, civil and polite to people that maybe you don't like. So uh, there's a lot of inference missed, I think, in these where Jesse says, oh, we're not on bad terms. 
Now, and this has nothing to do with there's like taking my bias against Gabby Hanna out of this. If I just heard someone, anyone, not necessarily Jesse Smiles, anybody say, oh yeah, we're on, you know, good terms. And I knew that these two people had a history of sort of a rough ending to a close friendship. My inference wouldn't be, oh, they're still the best of friends. My inference would be these people have a civil understanding between the two of them. Not that they're good friends, not that they hang out all the time, not that they've rekindled their friendship, just that things are fine. The waters are calm. The way Gabby puts it is that Jesse is lying. She's saying that we were, you know, we were fine, but there was really all this underlying stuff. Honey, I think there's always gonna be underlying stuff. Clearly everything Gabby did around Jesse and her assault and that whole situation hurt Jesse. And that shit doesn't go away, especially if the person who hurt you doesn't understand how actual apologies work and doesn't feel sorry. That's just something I've been thinking about, playing around with, sloshing up there in my brain piece. Also, I just realized I had a headache earlier and it went away. That's fantastic. Because for years, Jesse has been obsessed with keeping the narrative alive that we had this crazy, dramatic, toxic fallout between us. And she's made our friendship into this really big, uh, hyperbolic thing when I knew Jesse for like a few months, literally. What Gabby tries to do here is downplay her relationship with Jesse. Um, she spends a great deal of time really, really trying to hit home really trying to hammer in this idea that they were not really best friends. They were friends, kinda, for a few months, which I think is the most disgusting, well, not the most, there's a lot more disgusting stuff to come, but I think it's one of the most disgusting, most disingenuous, shitty things that Gabby has done, and it is such a play to completely downplay the entire situation. If you can't control the narrative, make shit up, I guess. It's so ironic, too, because what she's doing is exactly what she accused Trisha Paytas of doing to her, saying that we were never friends, we were never close, and... It's like I've never ever encountered someone who renders me speechless on this level before and it's really really jarring. What an exhausting way to live. I was friends with this girl for a few months when I was 23 years old. I'm 30. She's a stranger to me. I don't keep up with her life. I don't know anything about her. She doesn't know anything about me outside of the version of me that she created based on the five, six, seven months she knew me when I was 23. I didn't even know she was pregnant until people started preemptively accusing me, saying that it's my fault if she miscarries. Literally, that's how little I keep up with this girl. Most of the information that I have has come to me through emails and DMs of fans who since 2015 have been bookmarking tweets, downloading videos, and saving this shit. You know, like cults do. So I never talk about her, and because of that, I never got questions about her. Riddle me this. Why did the BuzzFeed journalist say that Gabby brought Jesse up a lot when she reached out to Jesse for comment? Because I built a life and a career outside of her, whereas Jessie only posted a video every few months, and half of them she brought me up in some capacity. Oh, I love shaming people for, like, how much more successful you are. So I said, Jessie, if you don't want people to talk about me, if you don't want people to ask about us, stop talking about me. I don't get asked about you because I don't talk about you. Wait a minute. I would like to note that later in this video, and it's in the Jessie Smiles three-hour phone call thing, um, Gabby requests that Jesse sign an NDA so that Jesse can no longer talk about Gabby, but Gabby refuses to sign an NDA in return so that she can continue to talk about Jesse, uh, which I think is hilarious considering no one ever asked Gabby about Jesse. And then she said, I didn't mean to cause you any stress, I just want people to drop it. And I said, well, don't you think that the way to get them to drop it would be to not say how we hurt each other in all these unimaginable ways and how you hyperventilate every time I reach out to you? And I would start hyperventilating. Like, it was so nasty between us. She's a storyteller. This is like a story time. This is like answering questions that her audience has. Like, Gabby really is acting like this wasn't her entire career. 
at one point. She knows what the format is. She knows how much embellishment and dramatics go into telling these stories. Look at the early days of Gabby's channel and you'll see that it's no different. Anything she did to anybody else is no different than what Jessie is doing in these videos. She's just talking. So then she said that she would edit out that portion of the video and she didn't edit out that portion of the video. Well, technically she didn't say that she would edit it out. She said that she can edit it out. So since you like to play the technicality game so much, there's one for you. But she did block me without telling me. Oh no. And that's Jessie in a nutshell. That's this situation in a nutshell. I asked Jessie, please just stop talking about me. Please stop talking about our friendship that happened for a few months, four years ago. You mean when you were best friends? And that was enough for her to block me. Gabby, and I know I've said this in other videos, Gabby sees blocking as like a form of weakness um, and something to mock. Um, and later in the second video, she's gonna be talking a hell of a lot about boundaries and the boundaries that she has set and all of her very important boundaries. The block feature is a boundary, okay? It's a fucking boundary. It is a boundary between you and the person you no longer wish to speak to. Is it courteous to let someone know that you're blocking them? Sure. Is it a requirement? No. So, God forbid someone blocks Gabby Hanna, all hell breaks loose. So then I don't talk about her, I don't think about her, and a few months go by, and then Trisha Paytas posts her video, uh, Why I Don't Trust Gabby Hanna, which at this point, I'm actually really happy to know that if nothing else, people realize that Trisha Paytas just lied out of her fucking head. Yeah, no, people don't realize that. It's not like, there's no, I don't know what, like, the, the echo chamber that Gabby lives in, it, it wasn't, there was no cut and dry, like, oh yeah, I'm so absolved of everything, <laughs> I was proven correct, like, literally nothing changed. Also, you still told Jason Nash and David Dobrik that they had herpes. And by they, I mean Trisha, not David and Jason. But, um, <laughs> um, so you're still an asshole for that. Sorry. So then Jessie, literally stating that she was inspired by Trisha's video, Full of lies. Gabby recently got into a drama, whatever, with Trisha Paytas. And Trisha Paytas is someone that, honestly, I consider a troll. I consider her someone that is almost never, like, being serious. And also, she has problems with, like, literally almost everyone. Well, Gabby literally just lied. She said, she, what, how did she put it? So then, Jessie, literally stating that she was inspired by Trisha's video, Full of lies. Did Jessie say that she was inspired by this video? She said she saw this video. I don't think she was inspired by it. There was already things going on, which we'll find out in the next video. By the way, did I mention this is a two-parter? This is a two-parter. Piggybacked on Trisha's lies with more lies. And then she starts tweeting that I'm a shitty person. She's making sure to respond to tweets and like tweets that make it very obvious that it is about me. For someone with a career, you really also need a hobby. Which causes a slew of people to tweet at me about how I chose my best friend which is something that's been happening since 2015. So I chose one of them who seemed very adamant. I really love that every time we talk about this, we uh, expose this girl. I'm going to hide her handle here, even though Gabby decided to put it in the video, which I think is gross, because um, she already has caused this girl enough trouble and uh, pain. I want y'all to know, and I want Gabby to know, to leave the fuck alone. She never asked for any of this at all, ever. It's really funny that Gabby's able to edit out information and dates and names and numbers um, when it suits her, but not at the expense of anyone else. And I know I'm gonna have to reiterate this later, and I will because it needs to be said again. By the way, I would also like to point out that did not tag Gabby Hanna in this tweet. So later when Gabby tries to justify all the ways that made a public tweet with incorrect information, she didn't even tag Gabby. She didn't even try to get Gabby involved. She was just tweeting like a person who's not a public figure on her Twitter account, which by the way, you're allowed to do. 
I've already apologized multiple times for sharing private information with a fan. I definitely took it too far. Surprise, uh, I'm impulsive. I make bad choices sometimes. I should have just stopped where she said that she didn't have any evidence for the claims that she was making. What normally happens when one of these situations comes up is I go back and start reading old text messages because I'm trying to see what went wrong. That's what gaslighting does to you, is you try to figure out where the fuck you went crazy. Yeah, but what adulthood does to you is like, have you just like reach out to the person uh, in some medium and if they have you blocked, you just kind of like let it go. And then like if you feel so inclined to like go back through your text messages, that sounds fine. But like also then when you get the information you're looking for, like maybe just like let it go and then just like stop talking about it. That's actually the same day that I found out that Jesse had blocked me. So I start reading through our text and I see, okay, so our last conversation was her saying how we, we both, both hurt, hurt each, each other, other, which, by the way, isn't that crazy that we both hurt each other and she's the only one who insists on telling these stories about how badly she was hurt? No, that's not crazy at all. She never had any closure. You're a public figure. who uses other people's trauma to sell stuff. No, I don't think that's crazy at all. So I look back and we're talking about her music and how I was always her biggest fan. And she's asking me for housing advice and what area she should live in. She's telling me about her son and her husband and she asked me for a job. A job. And no, that's not to shame her for wanting a job. It is to shame her. I was so afraid of somebody because they hurt me so bad and they were so evil, I wouldn't ask them to edit for them. There's a billion other YouTubers to ask to edit for. There's a billion other jobs outside of editing. You don't need a job from me so desperately that you would work for somebody that makes you physically ill because they're so scary. The difference is that Jesse is an adult who can find civility in, you know, being an adult and having conversations with people that she doesn't necessarily always agree with or like and also she just asked if you needed help with editing it's really not that incredibly serious was it a toxic friendship absolutely that's why it lasted for a few months when i was in my early 20s for a few months when i was in my early 20s i had friendships that lasted less than a year in my 20s too and um, if I had treated them like shit, I would still own up to it in my 30s if there was lingering resentment and hurt because, I don't know, I'm not a bad person. You got over it. She forgave me to the point where she was asking to be on my fucking payroll. And I forgave her for all of the horrible shit that she did to me that I don't talk about online because it's nobody's fucking business. Or it doesn't fucking exist. Because you know what else is nobody's fucking business? The medication that Jesse is on. Way that Alex James got a nose job or liposuction. None of these things are anybody's business either, but you have no problem sharing those. So, I'm gonna need to know your cherry picking selection process because this is um, stupid. Thank you. This was never about how I was so evil and need to be stopped and calling for me to be deplatformed. She is a dangerous person to have a platform. She doesn't think I'm dangerous. She's just obsessed with hurting me. And she has a lot. Everyone's obsessed with you. Why are you so obsessed with me? We are all obsessed. Yes, in the past, but that was all forgiven. And I don't go back and think about it very often. And it's not my style to share those types of stories. Because Jesse has a really great way of gaslighting you into forgetting that your reaction to her action was a reaction. And you are the master of projection. Go on. For example, she made a video called Gabby Hanna Needs to Be Stopped that literally ruined my entire fucking life and has not stopped ruining my life since. You ruined your own life. Jesse, talking about this situation that involved her and her personal information and the things that Gabby was telling fans and the way that she was treating people absolutely is Jesse's right to talk about. And if the roles were reversed, same goes for you. It would have been your business to talk about. I don't begrudge Jesse personally for talking about these things. It's her business. It's her, it's her life. This is the contents of her life. She's allowed to talk about it. If it ruined your life, maybe you should be looking at your behavior. Never mind the fact that she publicly tweeted that I was a shitty person. What did Gabby once say? She, she said this last year around the time she was feuding with drama channels where she would tweet vaguely and then people would be like 
defending themselves in her mentions and she would say something to the effect of like oh well if you're uh if you're in my mentions defending yourself against this you know nameless faceless tweet then you're exposing yourself and um Gabby, I think you're exposing yourself. Jesse's words, so what? It was just a catty tweet. Gabby, I was being catty. Despite the fact that I was getting so much hate and backlash because of what Jen Dent was also tweeting, plus the many private conversations she's had with many fans over the years that I show in the rest of the episodes, but one private conversation with one person warrants a video to six million people completely lying and ruining my reputation. You are the only person ruining your own reputation. If your behavior wasn't on par, with every single person that has ever exposed you, you wouldn't have a problem. This wouldn't be an issue. If you were truly innocent, the truth will out and the truth ain't willing out. It's willing all the way the fuck in, if you know what I mean. How is anyone to know, and I think I, I will bang on a little bit more about this later, how is anyone to know that this was the only private conversation you had with a fan to correct their assumption of you or misinformation, whatever the hell you want to call it. How is anyone else to surmise that this is the only time that this has happened? Because a lot of what happens with Gabby Hanna is a pattern of behavior. So personally, if I hear Gabby Hanna's DMing a fan all of this information, correcting their information, giving them new information, um, I'm gonna wonder how many times that's happening, especially with how completely adamant she is about correcting and controlling every narrative about her she feels is in any way incorrect. She's very good at playing the victim when she is and always has been the aggressor. Projection. Whether it's coming from her directly or her best friend's account, Jen Dent, the same account that she admitted to using as a diary, every single day harasses me, threatens me, doxed my ex, harasses my family, platformed my abuser. Listen, Jen Dent did not do most of this. Does not tweet at Gabby every single day or harass her, uh, does not threaten her, uh, except with a conversation. Jen Dent did not dox Peyton never happened. I was wondering who she was claiming doxed Peyton uh, and because I didn't remember it ever happening and as you know I'm pretty balls deep in all of this um, and I hadn't seen Peyton be doxed certainly by anybody that I know uh, so I can say for a fact that by the definition or any definition of doxing, I have not seen Jen Dent dox Peyton. I would suggest at this juncture that you, not at this juncture, but maybe when the video's over, you go uh, to Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts or her YouTube channel and listen to Jen Dent's most recent podcast episode as of right now. Her history with Gabby, her history with Gabby and Jesse and Alex and you make up your own mind you're you're a big person you can figure it out for yourself i don't mean that like physically like you like you look great I and mean, not that you wouldn't look great if you were big like i'm big you know like anyway let's keep let's just keep going if jesse wanted that to stop it would stop jen has even specified that she doesn't say or do certain things because jesse asked her not to she doesn't want it to stop she wants it to continue she wants her friends to keep putting out this information because then it's out there without her having to actually say it herself jesse is a true master manipulator every single time gabby hannah says the words master manipulator which is going to come back later um i want to just like unzip my skin and like hurl myself out a window. She's a puppet master. Oh god, Puppet Master's such a good movie. She has everybody do her work and spread her messages for her. She takes a small shrapnel of truth and hyperbolizes it the same way she hyperbolized the way we were best friends so that it seems more real. It's, is she just like pretending information away? Here with my dearest friend, Jesse yeah. Smile. Jesse Smile. <laughs> stranger. It feels like she's just like pretending information away. Every interaction Alex has had with Curtis, he has apologized to me for, and he was honest with me about 
in the time it was happening. Every interaction he had with Curtis Lepore, I knew about. The reason Jesse knows I had a phone call with Curtis is because I told her. We were not friends when the article came out, and then we met, and I apologized for some tweets, and then we became friends, and then we were not friends when I spoke to Curtis, and then she reached out to me to try to rekindle our friendship, and I told her right off the bat, yes, I'm happy to work on our friendship, but I want you to know this right off the bat because I don't want there to be any secrets between us. Even if every single thing that Jesse says that I did was true, her and I squashed it, and we were fine until it was popular and trendy to hate me, and she saw an opportunity. And if everything that Jesse says is true, which it's not, Alex James has done the same or worse. The Alex James has done the same or worse is irrelevant. It is the most irrelevant point in the world because what one person does and the degree to which they do it is completely separate from the way you do things. And that goes for anybody. If my best friend, who has been my best friend since I was eight years old, treated me badly, that would hurt worse than an acquaintance that I only know so well, that I don't see as often, and I don't trust or love as much. Beyond that, it is up to Jessie what she is forgiving, who she is forgiving, and why. That is her call. Nobody has to forgive you, and your behavior in the future can negate an apology in the past. Acting like Jesse's the fucking antichrist really does take away from your I'm I'm so sorry for the things I said it really just does I was gonna make another point but I forgot it the reason she gives Alex a pass is because she has to for her story to hold up or maybe he was actually sorry and has since changed the way he thinks and she's okay with that Maybe his behavior didn't end up becoming a pattern, turning him into a shitty person. You know? Alex lied through his entire video where he, in her words, took accountability both privately and publicly. But that man, he knows what he did wrong. And he's owned up to it publicly, and he's owned up to it, more importantly, privately to me. No, he absolutely did not. Who are you to say? Who the fuck are you to say? You are not Jesse. You are not Alex. It is not up to you to decide who Jesse forgives or what Alex said it's not up to you and it has no bearing on whether or not Jesse is willing to forgive you and y'all are willing to move the fuck on what she doesn't get is the way that she is pulling the shit apart makes her look fucking obsessed with this not the other way around so you can use your words and say, Jesse Smiles is obsessed with me. She's obsessed with hating me and obsessed with ruining my life. Honey, you are ruining your own life and you are obsessed with making it everyone else's problem and everyone else's fault. A fan actually sent me a video that he made breaking down and debunking all of Alex's lies where he supposedly owned up to all of his shit publicly and privately. Cult. My Airbnb was ready the next day. Honey, I packed my things up and said, all right, I'm gonna head out. Wow, four days. Four whole days? Wow, that is not soon enough to be hyperbolically the next day. Wow. I said this in my original video that I posted about the three hour phone call, which I'm unlisting because it wasn't supposed to be part of the series. I'll link it under here for anybody who wants it. There is no actual ending for Jesse. That's because you won't let go of this and just move on and have a regular life. She's saying that I need to be deplatformed because I'm dangerous. She is a dangerous person to have a platform. Yeah, you do because you are. For what? Speaking my side of a story that shouldn't have ever been public in the first place? No, for like abusive language and like, I don't know, like drumming up a faction of your fan base and having them go harass other creators and go harass other strangers on the internet in order to spread your truth. Um, you know, it's just genuinely being like a really bad person and like really proud of it plus like misrepresenting an entire mental health community uh continuing to uh refuse to respect someone's pronouns just generally being like kind of a bad person you know you know and that's the thing that truly makes me feel crazy is that the world doesn't see that the real toxicity in all of these situations, not just with Jesse, is smiling in somebody's face, pretending to be on good terms, pretending to have open communication with them. And then the second there's an opportunity to gain something 
throwing them under the bus and literally ruining somebody's life for attention, resentment, fame, money, revenge, whatever it is. The world doesn't see it because you're incorrect. That's it. Anybody involved in this is not 12. Resentment? Why would someone come to the internet to be resentful? There's no end game there. Fame? Money? For what? Revenge? What? <laughs> what plot of what dumbass movie do you really think you are the main character of? If you pretend to be good with somebody, be good with them. If you accept somebody's apology, cool. If you don't want to be their friend, fine. Well, that's rich as hell. There's a difference between not continuing a friendship and pretending to continue a friendship, smiling in somebody's face just to stab them in the back. Oh, the dramatics. And somehow I feel like society has deemed this as normal as long as it's on a social platform and is entertaining for everybody else. In the real world, these people would be monsters. You are unfamiliar with the real world, by the way. Um, you don't live in the real world at all. Like, at all. Not even a little. Because there's no empathy. There's no remorse. I know, you don't have any empathy or remorse. There's no regard for another human life that they're destroying. I know, you really should probably pay more attention to that. The reality of my life is, Trisha Paytas put out a video full of lies. And the actual reality of your life is that you told their boyfriend and friend uh, that they had herpes. Um, and then they put out a video full of lies. And Jessie piggybacked with her video full of lies. That video with like all of the screenshots that proved her point, those lies, whew. They're literally the same person. They're not at all the same person. They're friends. They support each other in everything. Everybody remembers that famous duo, Jesse Smiles and Trisha Paytas. They support each other in their lies. They work together to come up with lies. The delusion is so fucking strong. I'm pretty sure it does fucking crossfit at this point. Then Alex James piggybacked with his video full of lies. And everybody knows that all of the T-channels will 1000% go against me. They will completely ignore facts and evidence as long as it's a way to drag me because it's highly profitable to do so. It's highly viral to do so. Together, Jesse, Trisha, the T-channels, and everybody else who hopped onto that bandwagon put me in a position where if I compliment a girl's shirt in a makeover video, I will literally get accused of disrespecting a murder victim on a very viral scale and lose friends, sponsorships, and a record deal over it. Let's break this part down, okay? Let's break this down. Jesse, Trisha, T channels and everybody else who hopped onto that bandwagon put me in a position where if I compliment a girl's shirt in a makeover video, I will literally get accused of disrespecting a murder victim on a very viral scale and lose friends, sponsorships, and a record deal over it. I know she just read that to you, but I wanted to reread that because oversimplifying the situation doesn't change the context. I, well, it does change the context, but it doesn't change the reality of the situation. I, I said this a lot in the last video, but I want to say it here. Regardless of intent, regardless of the fact that there was no malice in the transformation into an e-girl video, what Gabby did was a mistake. I have said that many times. But it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. The accusation of disrespecting a murder victim came from her silence and refusal to address a situation that would have been over and done with had she just said, oops. Hey, how do you know so much about oops, I crap my pants? I am so sorry. Here's the petition. Here's where you could donate. I feel terrible. This was an error on my part. The only reason that situation blew up and got as big as it did and as viral as it did and as volatile as it did was because of Gabby and her reaction to it. She's the reason she has lost friends and sponsors and well I thought Trisha Paytas again was the reason she 
she lost her record deal. I don't know. We'll never be able to figure out how, how Gabby actually lost that record deal because I also thought that they split amicably. Anyway, um, taking this moment to like oversimplify what actually happened and really, really, really sort of try to downplay it um, is now apparently Gabby's new tactic. And I'm not, um, I, I'm not here for it. <laughs> Shit like this happens to me every few months. That's why I'm finally speaking up for myself. With the exception of the time Gabby took offline last year, she has been doing nothing but talking. Finally standing up for myself business is, is so stupid because she has done nothing but talk for days and days and then months upon months and years. Like she just has never shut up. Shut the fuck up! We've heard your side over and over again. You've never stopped telling it. We still think you're wrong. All of the people who have spoken out against me publicly are connected very closely. They're all friends. And yes, I'm the common denominator and no, I'm absolutely not perfect. I've definitely made a lot of mistakes and I've always owned up to those mistakes. But just because one person is the common denominator, sometimes there is just a group of mean fucking people who pick a target and go at them all the fucking time. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes that happens. That's not what's happening here though. You really are the common denominator. You really are the source of all of your problems. And I don't mean that in a way that's like, well, <laughs> fuck Gabby, you know, everything's her fault. I mean, literally, like there are situations, like the situation with the e-girl video. It would have been so fucking simple for Gabby to say, hey man, I messed up. This was a bad situation. I did bad. Holy shit, I had no idea. I feel like an idiot. Let me remedy this. Let me fix this. Kenza Cosmetics. It would have been so simple to send out a mass email or just put out one blanket statement that says, Hey guys, I'm really sorry. I didn't do my due diligence here. This is my bad. We're going to fix this. We're going to make it right. Give me some time to figure it out. Gabby is standing in her own way all the time constantly she is always in her own way she is the one standing in the way of her having a truly happy fulfilled fucking life dead ass when i said high school fucking bullies this is what i'm talking about this is a bunch of high school fucking bullies who banded together and i'm the fucking weird girl that they shove into the fucking lockers at lunch this my friends this is what art is. Gabby really earnestly put this photo into this video. But also like, Gabby fucking wishes she was the weird girl that people pushed into a locker. Like she would love that because that means she would have a personality that would make her unique or you know. She else sees a, a weird fucking problem in this that somebody who is a virtual fucking stranger to me years later trying to literally take everything from me literally saying that I'm a dangerous person and I deserve to lose my platform. Well, I mean when you bring her up unprovoked in a BuzzFeed article that goes viral and then your minions are continuing to attack her. Um, yeah. I can't have friends. I can't have a healthy relationship. I don't know, Gabby. Can you? Because it doesn't seem like you can. Um, and I don't think that everyone or I guess Jesse or Trisha or Jen or Alex are responsible for that. If you can't have healthy relationships, that's on you, babe. That's something you need to work through in therapy. There are a lot of things you need to work through in therapy. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I would love it if you'd go. Every other creator has been turned against me who have no personal issues with me based on the opinions and stories of other people. But they're also based on the actions that they've seen. Your bad behavior is public and just because people are exposing that doesn't mean that you're in the right and they're in the wrong. I mean, you just did it to Alex James. So stop it, get some help. And then other people have piled on and told their stories who also didn't have a problem with me until it was trendy too. It's not about it being trendy to hate you. It is easy to talk about 
something that's a problem when other people have said it first, you know? That's kind of at the crux of, like, the Me Too movement and survivors who came out against Cosby or um, Trump or any of these people, Kevin Spacey, any of these people with big platforms and big influence and, and power and money. There is safety in numbers. Yes, I will give you that. But that doesn't mean it's trendy to hate you. It means that someone opened the door to say, hey, this person's been shitty. And it gave someone else courage to say what happened to them. And then that gives other people courage to say what happened to them. Now, is every story always credible? No, of course not. Some people do jump on a bandwagon of hate. That's life. When people like Joey Graceffa and Daniel Prada come out and speak about this and, and talk about your not only unprofessionalism, but absolutely disgusting diva behavior and a, a complete misunderstanding for what set life is like they have every right to call you out do you remember when jane fonda and everybody at the studio wrote that huge letter to lindsay lohan when she was like out late at night and wasn't coming to set on time and wasn't doing her job well or was like not showing up she got called the fuck out because she was being unprofessional it's not a hate bandwagon it's having your behavior corrected because in an industry like this you don't want to be with me so you have to fucking be against me i am paranoid i've been pushed to the fucking brink of a psychotic break a thousand fucking times i've been pushed to the brink of suicide which jesse knows and literally doesn't give a fuck I, this is gonna sound really insensitive and i'm sorry it's not jesse's job to babysit your emotions it is not jesse's job to walk on eggshells around your mental well-being we are all responsible for our not that i encourage any sort of behavior like this or anything but we're all responsible for our own mental health if you and this goes for anybody if you feel you are a danger to yourself or somebody else please reach out for help this tweet and this has nothing to do with gabby even though it <laughs> It's about suicide, but it has nothing to do with Gabby. Just a reminder, threatening self-harm and suicide to manipulate someone into maintaining contact with you is emotional abuse. I don't understand how that's about Gabby other than a mention of suicide. Um, and that, that's true. That is actual, literal, abusive behavior. How is that Jesse not giving a fuck about you being suicidal? But again, it's, it's not her job. And if all of this... All of this is creating these feelings and behaviors in you. This industry is not for you. Because this industry requires thick skin. It requires you to not give a fuck sometimes. It requires you to stop caring what other people think about you so much. It requires you to not always get the last word or be able to control the narrative. And obviously, that's a problem for you. Nobody else thinks this is a little bit fucking psychopathic that a virtual stranger and her friends relentlessly hound and attack me and want to destroy my life and control every single aspect and facet of my livelihood and my day to day. You have to attack my relationships and his family and dox them and harass them. None of these people did those things. Thanks, that's a free one, royalty free. I believe she spends so much time talking about me to other people still. None of my friends have ever known who this person is. But all right, I get my ass to the studio, I lick my wounds, and I fucking write an EP. That's how I process my trauma. That's how I tell my stories. Then go do that. Like, go continue to do that. If this is what you feel, go do that. Get off fucking social media and go do that because that's clearly what you need to be doing and not this. So then I respond in the most polite way I possibly can think of and just try to show my side of the story and then I get threatened into a phone call that I told her that I was not mentally in a place to have. What Gabby perceives as a threat is very interesting. Responding in a polite way but also telling your side of the story, that's not an apology. Jesse threatening her 
this this isn't a screenshot of that it's just gabby saying i'm not trying to ignore you i'm trying to heal and it's making it extremely difficult when i'm dealing with the anxiety of another video popping up you publicly made a video making some very serious claims and i'm still dealing with the trauma can we please i'm begging you just give this some time that's that's not a that's not showing Jesse threatening. You really like need to work on getting your screenshots to match your words. Day. Finally, I have a phone call with her and then uses it against me a year later. That's the fucking hell in prison that I've been living in. All for a girl that I barely fucking knew. My dearest friend, Jesse, smile. Who literally just can't let me go. Let me go. Cannot be pleased, cannot be placated, and has admitted to literally just wanting to take everything from me, to deplatform me, because I, I hurt her feelings. No, no. I also listen to Curtis because he's a human being. And just like in real court, in the court of public opinion, if you're gonna judge and condemn somebody, you should at least hear them out. Okay, on with the series. Yeah, on with the series. That was just an aside. That was like a, a, like a, a, like a 20 minute aside. Alex and I drove together and he was like, come stay with me. And he's like hurt me before, dude. Gabby here just made a claim that Alex James has physically hurt her before. Um, what the f I'm not here to victim blame or victim shame. Um, <laughs> But come at a video already pissed because Jessie accepted Alex's apology and that doesn't bode well in comparison to how she treats Gabby. Um, and then just casually throws in that he is physically, I mean, I guess we can say assaulted her. That's alarming. Not because I think Alex hurt her. But because it seems that there's literally nothing Gabby Hanna won't say to try to curry favor in a situation where she's losing. Such a passive mention in a video meant to be this great catharsis where she's laying everything on the table. I find it really hard to believe it because I feel like if she was bold enough to mention it, she would have said what happened. So I find it almost impossible to believe without even a shred of detail. Sorry. <laughs> I stand by the fact that I think Rice Gum is a piece of shit. She was wronged in that situation for sure. But this accusation is about as sturdy as me throwing myself down a flight of cement stairs. Anyways, I packed my shit and Jessie was like, come over because she hated Alex. And? I made a choice when I chose Jesse. I made the choice that I knew for a fact that none of these other people were going to talk to me because they were all very much pro Curtis. So I was pro fucking Jesse. I was her only fucking friend. Of course you were. When I say everybody backed Curtis, everybody backed Curtis. So like I can't have any friends in the Vine community. Oh, okay, cool. Um, really noble choice to, to choose Jesse over Curtis. Uh, but like making this claim that you're so selfless and her only fucking friend uh, and then complaining about the result of those actions makes you um, sound like an ass. Uh, choosing your friend over the rapist and complaining that it's making your life harder um, and difficult to like network um, and have friends doesn't really spell out good friend to me, but what do I know? I was basically being completely dragged through the filth. Okay, next up on phrases Gabby Hanna uses completely incorrectly, we have dragged through the filth. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I believe you were looking for dragged through the mud uh, or read for filth. But thanks for playing. Your parting gift is a compilation of all the other times this has happened. Not to toot my own horn, but beep the fucking beep. This is going to blow your gasket. I will go down on this hill. Story bro sounds intense to talk about, especially because it is somebody else's story, but like, it's also now a part of my story and that was Jesse's choice. It was Jesse's choice to bring you into her rape. I cannot imagine saying that earnestly. What a fucking disgusting thing to say. The story about her broke. And then my like group chat, the Vine Twitter friends, from what I was hearing from everyone and what all of the major Viners were saying was that she was a liar. <laughs> yeah, I was just commenting as a spectator. I was still living at home. I was still working my marketing job. Like I was just a 
regular ass person making a little bit less than anonymous comments on the internet. Oh, okay, so when Gabby does it, when she tweets and like, I was just making anonymous comments, I didn't think anyone would see it, that's okay. But when people do it and they use her name, her- My real fucking name! That's a problem? You don't get to fucking talk about people and say whatever the fuck you want to say. Okay. I get it. <laughs> but I would like ask her to hang out and sometimes she just wouldn't respond to my texts or she would say she wanted to hang out but then like ghost. I just kind of like accepted that her and I were distancing. That was around the time I started getting close with Jenna. So I met Jenna at VidCon. She really inspired me a lot in YouTube. Like she was a big role model for me. I told her a story at VidCon. She talked about it on her podcast. I literally cried my eyes out because I was like, holy shit, Jenna Marbles thinks I'm funny. Again, there's no respect for boundaries. And I had started hanging out a bit. And then every time I would post about it on Snapchat, like Jesse would hit me up. I'd be like, hmm, maybe it's a coincidence. So then there was one Saturday where I hit up Jesse and I asked her to hang out and she didn't answer me. So then I went to Jenna's house that night and then Jesse hit me up while I was there because I was we were snapchatting there referencing Jenna marbles to make Jesse look like a bad person which is what she's trying to do with this story I told Jesse hey I'm busy let's hang out tomorrow didn't hear from her is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that Gabby Hanna has no respect for other people's boundaries Jenna marbles made the conscious decision to leave the internet Jenna and Julian made the conscious decision to stop posting to delete their Twitter. Julian doesn't take questions on stream about Jenna. It is understood. Jenna is offline completely by choice. Bringing Jenna up as some sort of leverage in this conversation is gross and a disrespect to one of the highest regarded creators ever on this platform. She blackmailed me. Dude, she told me that if I didn't delete that fucking video, that she was going to expose me. That's not what these screenshots say, by the way. Um, and I'll read them to you. Hey Gabby, I just saw your story time about me and because I've been getting tweets and comments about it all day today. I know this is our job and I know the content needs to be pushed out so it's not always personal, but I really just wanted to ask you directly if you could private it or delete it altogether. Watching you call me or pass me psychotic and neurotic was hurtful enough, but hearing the lies you told in the story just to make me seem crazy really made me upset at first. I don't think you purposefully lied, or at least I don't want to think that, but I do actually have proof that things didn't go down like you said they did. I have not gone public about your whole thing with when you know I could have. It's just not who I am. To see you do it so nonchalantly, calling me jealous and psychotic when you know how things ended with you and blank was shocking to me. Anyway, I'm just reaching out because I doesn't, if it doesn't get taken down, I will have to make a response video. I really, really don't want to, but a good amount of people know now know it was about me. And I have to tell the truth and show proof that what was said is not true. I will. Our careers are unfortunately built off of public perception and when you mess with that, you're messing with my livelihood. I hope you can understand that and that this doesn't turn into something dramatic. The past is dead to me and I don't want to have to bring it up in order to defend myself, nor do I want to tear you down in any way. Sorry for the novella, lol. I want to be upfront with you before I do anything, but more importantly, I don't want to have to do anything at all. It's such old news. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Saying you'll have to make a response. A response is not an expose, especially if the thing that you said wasn't the truth. That is defending yourself. Defending yourself isn't calling people a bitch. It's not tearing down their character. It's not treating them like shit on a public platform. That's not defending yourself. That's being abusive. That's what narcissistic abuse is. She also is obsessed with me. Why are you so obsessed with me? Stop it. Get some help. Because she specifically releases shit on release dates of mine. Like, that's so fucking weird, dude. I don't think Gabby realizes that even if these videos came out the same minute, I don't think that would affect the viewership as much as she thinks it would. People who are watching your content are watching because they would watch anyway. They're watching because they like what you do. They watch because they like your music or whatever the fuck you're putting out. I don't think they're not watching because Jesse put out some video. 
she literally reached out to me one time after one of her blowouts and she was like, I still have that text. <laughs> Please don't make me look for it. I might look for it. I might look for that one, but I might not because that's literally like, I don't even have a charger for that phone. Yeah, I mean, that's so crazy that you're doing this series where you have all these things and receipts and stuff to expose about people and you saved all these phones, but like, I don't even have a charger for that phone. Don't make me find the proof. <laughs> One time she texted me and she was like, hey, can we talk or whatever? I was like, yeah, what's up? This is after we hadn't talked like three months. And she was like, I'm really sorry. I pushed you away because you saw it through me like a floppy piece of paper, which by the way, what a bad metaphor. Beep the fucking beep. You saw through me, like there's so many things that you could see through, but a floppy piece of paper? Paper is not even that transparent. This is going to blow your gasket. That always really annoyed me more than I realized. I will go down on this hill. Such a bad metaphor, dude. It's like right before VidCon, she literally asked me to go get drinks and food. Literally, she was like, hey, I'm in California. We should try to like meet up and get drinks and food. I was like, totally, let's do it. So then I'm at VidCon. I went to one of the parties and then all of a sudden Jenna and Shan were like, dude, are you good? And I was like, yeah, why? And they were like, Jesse was just in here. And I was like, oh shit, no, yeah, we're cool. No worries, like we're, we're supposed to meet up or whatever. So then I went out into the venue and I was looking for her and I was asking people like, hey, have you seen Jesse? Have you seen Jesse? And then I saw Alex and I was like, have you seen Jesse? And then he said she was like sitting at a table. And I got this voice note from her screaming at me, threatening to fucking hit me and shit, dude. Like, this, like violent, like dead ass, threatening to punch me in the Face. Okay. A couple weeks after that, we had VidCon and I knew I might run into Gabby and I had to mentally prepare myself for that because I was completely pissed. I arrive at VidCon, I go into the lobby and I talk to a mutual manager of ours. And she was talking to me about getting all settled in and stuff. And before I left, tells me, oh, by the way, Gabby was just here. She was looking for you. I just played it off and I kept it pushing. And then a couple hours later at a cocktail hour, I was told again by someone that you were looking for me. And I'm not gonna lie, I was fucking upset. I could not understand how you had the audacity to look for me so much when you knew that we were having an issue because you had just tried to recruit my ex-boyfriend to be in an exposed video about me. So you weren't looking for me to play patty cake. You were looking for me to either talk something out or start conflict, I don't know what. Fast forward even more, I think it might've been the next night, I went to a party and I was drunk, no excuse for this, but I was drunk. I encountered one of our mutual friends who told me that Gabby was looking for me again. And I lost it. That's the only way to describe how angry I got. And I unblocked Gabby's number and I texted her, if you keep looking for me, you're gonna find me and I'm gonna punch you in the face. That is the physical violence threat. She, <laughs> she said, I'm unblocking your number. Uh fuck what did she say i don't remember but she was like i'm unblocking your number to tell you this and i was like dude i didn't even know you had me blocked like we were fine yesterday <laughs> she was like you're lucky that the uber pulled up when it did what like what type of violent weird like why are you being so violent to me you literally asked me to get food and drinks and then i'm at a party at vidcon where you are and i ask where you are and you're like keep my name out of your mouth don't fucking ask about me don't ask where i am don't ask what i'm doing and i'm like you said you wanted to get food and drinks. So she sent me the six minute long voice note and then blocked me. It's so wild how those voice notes are just not saved. So then I sent her an email because I'm not cool with that. If you're gonna fucking say some vile ass shit after you threatened to hit me and then don't give me a chance to respond to all the bullshit you're spewing, I will find another way to contact you. That's called not respecting other people's boundaries. I don't care what somebody said to you. If they're angry for any reason, if they don't want to talk to you, if they've chosen to block you and they don't want to talk to you any further, it's not your job to get the last word in to correct the information because that wasn't public. I could see being stressed about it when it's a public thing. When there's a public video made and you feel like there's misinformation, I could see where you feel compelled to make a video, to speak your truth, to defend yourself, whatever. Um, this was private. Who are you proving anything to? So you're disrespecting her boundaries to reach out to her, to send her an enormous email. At one point I reached out to her. No, she told me, she told me to do that. That's why I reached out to her. She did such a good job of editing out Shane. 
I've been asking myself, why did you ever ask to collab with her? Because at one point I like asked her like, hey, do you want to do a collab? And at that point it was at a point where I was like fucking done. Like you threatened to hit me, bitch. And I told him all this and then he was like, you should collab with her. Shane is the worst. I am the common denominator. I fully take credit. Everybody, please let it be known that I am in fact the fucking common denominator. I am not like these people. I don't, I don't think Gabby understands what the common denominator means. I am a victim of narcissistic abuse. What? Isn't it all so ironic that like Jesse did to me what happened to her? What? Huh? Sure that I wasn't always fucking pleasant to be around because I was codependent to a narcissist. Mmm, yeah, that tastes like excuses. It's really not that hard to say. I probably wasn't pleasant to be around. I wasn't always great. And just leave it at that. No, I was codependent to a narcissist. Ended that toxic relationship. I've tried many times over the years to make amends with her over this. And then she still just like makes a fucking video full of weird lies, dude. And the evidence in the video was so dumb and nobody even fucking read it. She got so nervous about this and this is why she added that in the video. Shows these screenshots of this conversation where the conversation between me and Jen was like in my favor. And not a sliver of self-awareness was had that day. He's a real fucking narcissist, dude. Like, she has to control everybody around her. She's not smart enough to be sociopathic. You don't study to become a sociopath. Being a sociopath doesn't require a level of intelligence. Uh, it's a disorder. Uh, often developed as a result of trauma. I don't feel bad saying that at all, by the way. Man. One hell of a mental health advocate, huh? She's not a smart or nice or kind, cool person. She sucks. Man, third grade really took a toll on Gabby, huh? Obviously. Look what she did. Over what? Again, what was it again? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the fact that you were, you know, hanging out with her rapist. It was that. Okay, where was I? Oh my god, I'm so fucking bored of this story. Then maybe try letting it go instead of... Whatever the hell this is. I wanted to be a singer. A lot. Her dream and goal has always been to be an entertainer. I love entertaining people. I think it's pretty much what I was born to do. And I did it and she didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, she did. And she's better than you. Just because she prioritized different things doesn't mean she's not a successful person and where oh that's where i was the conversation i was having with jen was because multiple times like jesse would literally just discard jen when jesse would throw jen to the fucking wolves jen would reach out to me and try to be my friend and like she apologized to me for treating me weird let's take a moment to really look at these okay she's got a little aside here that says here's how much i have to overthink with these people her name appears differently here than other screenshots because she got a new number and I saved it differently. It's not a conspiracy, promise guys. Yeah, you're right, her name does look different than it did in the other screenshots. You know what else looks different? The way that um, it says, Gabby, this is Sarah. Yeah, that's different. Jen tweeted this the other day um, with this screen grab because this definitely caught my attention and I'm really glad that Jen addressed it. Uh, Jen's tweet says, my name is not Sarah and I have never used that name. I was in Portland, Oregon and a friend of mine sent me that and asked me to send it to Gabby. But cool flex, nice try. You go Glenn Coco. I love Jen. I am not sure if Gabby herself is editing her videos and compiling all of these screenshots or if it's her editor. Uh, but either way, who, whoever it is, they're overpaid. Oh fuck, I still have to talk about what happened after the video. Ugh. It's so long and boring. Okay, so it's clearly not weighing on her then, right? Because if this was as outrageously traumatic for her as she said, this cavalier bored attitude or show that she's putting on would negate that, right? Shouldn't this be in some way cathartic? Isn't that what this is about? Me when I'm not smart enough to be a sociopath? Apologize so many times to you between 2013 and, and up in that video, like, and I've still never, like, 
Where's mine? Apologies are not reciprocal. Okay, sometimes you may not get apologies that you feel you are owed and that's called life. Dude. And you have the fucking balls to get on and talk about how you'll, dude, you, you didn't do that for views. That's why I get so fucking upset when people say, I'm always starting drama. I can't let shit go. You are always starting drama and you cannot let shit go, which is why we are here. So that's pretty much where this video ends. Um, and this is where this video ends. Um, we are going to get very, very, very in detail in the next video. The next video I have so many fucking notes for. So if you want to continue to see Gabby Hanna talk about a story that has so many holes it triggers my trypophobia, the next video will be up in a matter of days, and we will get to it then. Um, and in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike. I love engagement. I will never be engaged. This is my only engagement. Again, my discount code SAYJACK on adamandeve.com gets you 50% off an item. Free shipping in the US and Canada. Subscribe, I make new videos whenever I feel like it. We do a live here every Friday. It's my social media is linked down below. All I ask is that you don't be an asshole. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. I'm very tired. Goodbye. Dude, of course you're talking about, dude. Uh, dude, I haven't washed this bra. Dude, it's not down there. Wait, let me see if I can find it. Whoa. I swear to God, I wasn't thinking. I swear to God. Oops. Oh my God. Ah! Okay. Story time videos. But I guess now you know. Yeah.